Hello everybody, I'm Katrina Morton, I'm a sensory motor psychotherapist and today we're looking at what it's like to grow up in a volatile environment. Before I jump into that, if you're enjoying these videos, then please like and subscribe to our channel as it really helps us get out there and get to as many people as possible. So growing up in a volatile environment, what I mean by that is when people's moods can change very quickly. Things are unpredictable. Someone can go from perfectly calm to very angry very quickly. And often we don't see these things coming. If somebody is very volatile and unpredictable, sometimes the triggers for that are really difficult to guess and they can change over time. So it's very, very difficult to have any kind of sense of consistency. And so we're not going to be able to really relax in an environment like that. One of the things that we'll develop in order to manage and cope is a very acute sense of hypervigilance. And that looks like never really switching off. So being able to take in a lot of information all at once, to be able to scan the room, keep our ears wired for sound. You know, we're not gonna miss anything. We're a bit like a lighthouse. Our whole focus is on out there, checking for danger, sensing a change in mood, trying to be one step ahead of the game so that we've got a bit of preemptive warning about what's coming. The other thing that people that live in a volatile environment learn to do is read people very quickly. They don't even know how they do it, but they can sense what someone's mood is, they can sense all sorts of things about them because they learn to be always trying to assess for a threat and they get very, very good at it. And it's an instant thing. If you are with somebody that's really hypervigilant, they will notice things that you don't even pick up. They'll be very, very clued in to everything going on around them but they'll have very little awareness of themselves. If you're a lighthouse, all your attention is going out there. It's not in here. And often people that have been brought up in those environments, they've learned to adapt and cope really, really well. And it's only when they go into other environments that they notice that things are just a bit tricky. they usually find it very, very difficult to relax. They might have a sense of, I know I need to relax more. I'm very stiff and very tense. I'm always in my head. I'm a real overthinker. I never switch off. And so they might try some meditation or some mindfulness or a yoga class. And what they find is they can't do it. And even if they try and do it, it makes them feel incredibly uncomfortable. For somebody that's lived in a volatile environment where things can kick off at any time or the mood can change, then take that person lying on a yoga mat in the middle of a room with loads of other people when they can't see what they're doing and being asked to switch off all your alert systems and just be in the moment. It's almost an impossible task and they'll try and try and try and they just can't do it but they won't know why. And so when I'm with somebody, and I suspect that they're very hypervigilant, sometimes just a little test is because we're hypervigilant for people, because it's people that have been the problem. And so even although their conscious brain is saying, well, you know, she doesn't seem like a threat, she's absolutely fine, and she seems very consistent, and, you know, I've been here a couple of weeks. If I ask them to try and look away from me, for five seconds, it can be really, really difficult. And that can be quite a good measure of, is your hypervigilance on? Or if I ask him to just stare at a certain point for five seconds, it's like, no, I can't do that. That makes me feel really uncomfortable. I have to keep moving and watching things. When we try and just nail it to the floor, it gets very, very disconcerting. And so, we know what we need to be able to do is try and turn this off a little bit or give ourselves the access to enable that to turn off and just to switch off because while it's cranking up and you've no idea what your body's doing then it's going to be very difficult to just be in your body just to you know get any sense from what your body's actually telling you so with those people 
We want to do easy access. We want to make life as easy as possible by just bringing our awareness to our body because, you know, it'd be really, really difficult to just like follow your breath, follow a few breaths. They might not be able to even locate their breath in the body and they'll say, yeah, I'm breathing. Yes, you're definitely breathing. You're not turning blue, but what's the quality of that breath? They won't be able to tell you. We start with just doing some really simple exercises of noticing and one that's quite good because it also involves the curiosity and the observer is if you put your hands on the fronts of your legs just below your knees and you lift your toes up and lift them up as tight as you can you can feel those little muscles at the fronts of your legs just below your knees going into little egg shapes and our curiosity quite likes that and it's like can you feel that? Can you feel the cause and effect of lifting your toes up and feeling that muscle? You're feeling it through your hands. And they say, oh yeah, I can feel that. And do you notice it's consistent? Every single time you do it, it's the same. When we've not had consistency in our life and we've had unpredictability, finding a resource, something that can give us at any time that present moment experience of connecting, feeling something, we're not having to sense into it too much at this stage, and the fact that it's always the same, it can be quite a reassuring thing for people. You can do it with any muscle in your body, but that one's quite a good one because it always bulges out if we don't want easy access to our body. Can you find some muscles in your arms? Can you squeeze them? Can you let your muscles know when they're squeezed as much that they can't squeeze anymore? So you're learning to read those signals. Now when you release them, can you do it really slowly so that you've got a bit of control and you can feel your muscles releasing? Now when you get someone to just practice that, you're not asking the head to just completely switch off. You're giving the head a job to help notice and observe in the body. You can do the same with the muscles in your legs. You can do the same with your stomach muscles. You can do the same with your glutes. You can squeeze them and release them slowly. One, it gives you control. One, it gives you a sense of consistency. And you're creating that connection with your body without allowing a great big ask of your brain. We can do other things to just start to become more aware and observing of what the body is. If you squeeze your arms really, really, really tightly into your sides and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it, it automatically compresses your breath. When you let it go really quickly, you can automatically take a really deep breath. When I do these things with someone, it's like, can you notice that? The first time they might miss it because they're not used to paying attention, but it's something that's so big and so obvious that they can't help but notice it. Okay, we'll do it again and just notice. Oh yeah, I noticed that really deep breath. Oh, actually, my breathing's a little bit easier now that I've kind of kick-started it. And so it's a way of turning the hypervigilance off without setting any alarm bells off by bringing curiosity, really starting to train your level of noticing and awareness, but in ways that are easy. We don't want to make life too difficult. We want to start with something that's possible. The other thing with people that have been brought up in a volatile environment is they'll find it very difficult to trust, to just trust that everything's going to be the same, that things are going to stay the same. It can be very disconcerting and often because our belief system is that everything always changes and something always bad happens so don't let your guard down, don't get too relaxed. For some people it's very very reassuring but for others it can be very disconcerting and because control is such a big issue, especially if our environment has felt a bit out of control, then control is really important and we hate surprises and so often if the belief system is now everything's okay but it's going to change so I've got to be ready People who have been used to that will often poke and sabotage things. They'll cause the chaos and mayhem because one, it's, they're used to it. Secondly, their belief system says it's going to happen anyway. And thirdly, I'm going to be the one that makes it happen. They won't consciously know why they're doing it, but they might begin to notice a pattern. And that'll come up in relationships. 
You know, do you always sabotage your relationships? Does everything always end up in chaos or arguments? When you can really start to understand why that might be the case, and then begin to have a bit more sense of yourself and be able to read yourself, bring your observer on board, it gives you an opportunity, even if it's just a, a second or two, to observe what am I doing right now? What is it I'm doing? Could this be that belief system that's playing itself out? Could this be me just repeating all patterns of behavior? And, you know, I'm the one that's causing this, or at least playing a big part in causing this. When we can do that, you know, understanding what's in our unconscious, understanding what our coping mechanisms and those behaviours are actually trying to achieve, then it really helps us know what we're aiming for in the work, what changes we're trying to put in place, and, you know, just giving ourselves the easiest ways possible of doing that. So we need consistency, we need to be able to trust ourselves. We need to be able to regulate ourselves and have a sense of ourselves, not always be switched on and hypervigilant and overthinking everything. Bringing it back to us, making those changes internally that have been very, very missed. Then if we can do just those things, it makes a massive, massive difference when we're in relationships, whether it's friendships, family relationships, it can make life a lot easier and feel a bit less impulsive. So if this video has been helpful and useful and it helps you understand why living in a volatile environment can still affect you even when you're out of that environment, then give us a like, subscribe to our channel and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye!